Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the uh, village board meeting of the village of Westchester. It is Tuesday, September 26th, 2017. We're in the village boardroom. It is now 7 p.m. Uh, can we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stan, can we have a roll call, please? <clears throat> Trustee Calcogno. Present. Trustee Celestino. Present. Trustee Miller. Present. Trustee Perry. Present. Trustee Stecker. Present. Trustee Yurkovich. Present. President Gattuso. Present. All right, moving down, we have no presentations. Go to number five, public comment. If anyone would like to address the board, please, please step up to the mic, state your name and the purpose, and uh, please make sure you filled out a form prior to coming up or after you're done, Danny, it doesn't matter. Just fill out a form so this way we got it on record, okay? I think it's on. Uh, good evening, everyone. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that's better. <laughs> All right, um, Daniel Maldonado. I just wanted to briefly talk about, um, I sent an email out to the entire board, including the president, um, regarding um, speaking on the, the issue with Puerto Rico and, and the catastrophe that happened out there um, and requesting the support of uh, the board and the entire village. Um, to ha have a center of, dr of drop-off um, for relief efforts. Um, I, did, I, gave, I already believe everybody received it. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I gave detailed information as to um, the organizations involved, um, how the, um, everything would work out, the items that, that, are, that are needed. Um, so I'm here to, today to ask um, if that is at all possible um, to get from this village and its leadership. Danny, we talked about this. Uh, I know the board was all emailed on the whole thing. Uh, we would like to offer you a day to that we can drop off here. The only thing we have, if it's not on a Friday, because our food pantry does on Fridays, so we want to make sure we don't interfere with the food pantry. But you can do it on a Saturday and then make sure everything gets out by Sunday and stuff and get it out to that point. On, on one whole day, I was hoping to kind of start something tomorrow up till Sunday only. Well, the problem is, like I said, the food pantry has their thing on there on Friday okay. in, in the community room, and that's probably the best room for you to use, okay? okay? So I would, I would ask if you could do it like Saturday and maybe Sunday and try to get that out that way. Instead of doing Thursday night, we have the Water Commission meeting in that room too on Thursday. So I mean, so there's a couple issues at that. Wednesday night, I don't know if the room's booked or not because tomorrow's Wednesday. I don't know if the room's booked or not. We can look at that. But I would ask that we get things, because if you put them in there on Wednesday, how are you going to get them away for everyone from Thursday or Friday for the uh, uh, food pantry to meet? You know what I'm saying? Because right. they set up that whole area okay. in that whole uh, community room there for people to come in and out and pick up their foods and stuff. So. Now, uh, do we well, know if any, any churches or any other schools? DI has something going DI on. DI has something, something for Texas and Florida and stuff. They have something they can drop off there. So you have two drop off points. We can be okay. one on okay. Saturday, mm -hmm. and DI can be from when you want to do from Wednesday on. Okay, and then sure. you can combine it and come to pick it up from here and then go on your way. We'd be happy to help you that way. Okay. It's the only thing we just don't want to disrupt the food pantry because that's been running very good and it's done a lot of good things. Okay. You know, we're actually working well with them and they're distributing to a lot of homes, a lot of people in Westchester. And we're actually getting a lot of, the, lot of vegetables from the, uh, the place in Hillside right off of 22nd Street where they uh, are growing stuff there. So it's really cool because it's grown right here and brought right here so it's as fresh as could be. So are, are yeah. you looking for perishables too like that? Correct, yeah. You are, okay. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying. Yeah, no, try to do it that way. A couple of years great. ago, Sam, Sam had let it and he left the drop off in, in the front of the building. But with perishables, you can't do something like right. that. There's got to be somebody there to receive it. Yeah, I think that's a better way of doing it. Frank, and if you want to help out too, you can. You, right. you have the key to come in yeah. the door and get everything set. God forbid it's raining that day and everything else, so you want sure. to use that. That's fine. Right. Just We just don't want to disrupt the food pantry. Okay. That's the only thing, because that's then, done a great service to everyone. And then, of course, everyone's invited. If you want to give some time to help out, volunteer your time. I, the only person I did hear from was from Frank, so Frank, you thank, thank you so yeah, much pleasure. for uh, getting back to me right away. But um, So everybody is just 
Thank you, Danny. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Please go ahead. Yeah, Joe, go ahead. Whoever wants to go. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joe Bilner. I live at 10711 Dorchester Street. I'm here to support Danny Maldonado and our villages around the Chicagoland area. Uh, <coughs> within the last week, I flew in three charters into Puerto Rico. I came out of retirement from working at UPS for 35 years. And it's been, it's been unbelievable. And each time I load a piece of cargo on that airplane or my people, I cry. Because I knew a guy by the name of Roberto Clemente. Roberto Clemente, back in 1972, they had three charter flights that went into Nicaragua. And each cargo flight was commandeered by the, the government in Nicaragua, the Samari government. The fourth charter, Roberto Clemente, was on that airplane. He lost his life. He was a remarkable player. I knew Roberto Clemente. He called me shortstop. He wouldn't call me shortstop today because that shortstop took away from me. But the thing is, I don't know how we can support with our community and other communities in the area to get th things get together, stop offs or what have you, and, and possibly go to the UPS Foundation who will help you move this cargo into Puerto Rico. Like I said, I flew, uh, I flew three charters in there, Granger, McMaster Carr, John Don, Baxter, Abbott, Abby, we were on those charter flights going down. It's like first responders to a country that's been part of the United States the, you know, for the longest time. So I appreciate any help that we can do for our, our fellow Americans in Puerto Rico. And I, I think if anybody has any questions, you know, I'd be glad to answer them. But I know it's a long shot, but if you don't push forward to find out what you could do, you never know. We need to help these people. That's, that's my say. You know, so, and I appreciate giving me the little bit of time here this evening. Frank, thanks very much. You know, you supported what Danny's trying to do here. I don't know what we could do as a community, but I'll tell you what, Westchester is a forefront. If we lead the way, uh, others will follow. So that's about it, all I have right now. Uh, any questions? Any Bill, questions? Uh, really for Danny, I got a question. Danny, have you put together any kind of like a little flyer that, um, I mean, you know, if anybody's willing to, I know I am, to uh, post to help kind of promote this. Yeah, would you, would you send it to us? If you forward you know. it to us. Yeah, that would be great, Danny. And like I said, our hearts go out to everybody in these, in these times with these hurricanes and stuff and stuff. We, have, we all have family in all areas. I have some in Florida, some in Texas, too. So, I mean, there's just a, a terrible thing that's going on at this point in time. And uh, our hearts go out to them. We didn't hear from a family for two or three days from Florida, but we finally got to them, and it was, they were fine. It's just, uh, you know, it's just devastating to see and hear and look at a TV and watch and see everybody. You know, they just I was watching TV earlier here. I was in the office. There was a background and saw that come up. They're rescuing little dogs, little kids that were struck in a school. All kind. Of, so it's just heart set. You know, when you see that kind of stuff, you really feel bad and you want to get in and help. And I'm glad we're all trying to do something to get there, get it to them, okay? And my, my second comment this evening here, and thanks for this time, is that what is the village ordinance uh, when the post office is allowed to park in the yellow zones around our town? Is there a village ordinance that, do they have to abide by the same rules as a, U, uh, as a Westchester resident? Can I park in the yellow zones? Can the post office park in the yellow zones? Okay. Sam Polia helped me out with a situation over at Dorchester and Mayfair. There's a glass company there that continues to operate, bringing his equipment in there, and it's so, so disgusting with the area. But when you come northbound on Mayfair and make a right-hand turn to go east on Dorchester, the post office parks about five to 10 feet in the yellow zone, and there's two cars parked going eastbound that never move. It's a car and a van. They never move. One of these days, it's going to happen. Somebody's going to come around that bend pretty quickly and get, somebody's going to get hurt. The post office lady, I was a safety director for UPS. 
alo along with the other hats they had. And I had a talk with the lady, and she constantly, she don't want to talk to me anymore. Officer, officer O'Hagan and Battaglia, great officers. I told them about it. They said, well, every time it happens, call the police department. You know, why don't we nip it in the butt and, you know, talk to the postmaster. Postmaster doesn't want to talk to me at all because he said my people are right. Well, I, I, I said to him, sir, you're different. You're wrong. And he didn't want to hear that. But everywhere around our community, they park in the yellow zone. And we should be out there enforcing the laws of not only Westchester, but other areas that we're not just supposed to park in a yellow zone. That's my comment. We got it. Chief, maybe we can go over tomorrow and talk to the postmaster and see if they'll keep that up. Keep that up, and Joe, we'll, we'll work on that for you too. Okay, we'll, we'll work on that. We'll get somebody that. over there to look at that too. I appreciate that. By the way, thanks very much. The the, uh, the board did a nice job. It was waste management. Everything. Thanks, Frank. Everything's working out like clockwork. Thank you so, too, Mr. Stecker. Right. I knew your dad very well, and uh, I coached your daughter in volleyball when she was a divine infant. Katie. Oh, my sister. No, my sister. Funny. Not daughter. Yeah. Daughter. Yeah. 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 Daughter's <laughs> only 13 months. He only I looks There's a lot of guys' daughters <laughs> out there. You know. And the best was Chrissy Catuzzo with St. Joe's. We almost won it. We had, we, we had RV on the ropes, but that's another yeah. story. That was fun sure times, is. Joe. Great yeah. times. Anyone else would like to come up? Good evening. Uh, I'm here in reference to a uh, village code, 1132-155, recreational vehicle parking. Uh, in April of this year, uh, I was cited by the code department um, that my the RV that I have has been parked, or an RV of one type or another, has been parked at this location for over 30 years. I have never had a problem until April of this year. The code department, or the code inspector, broke down that it had to be either brick or concrete. At the time, the ordinance said, stated paved. The definition of paved, according to Webster's, was brick, concrete, stone, or even wood. I presented that to uh, the code department. I was told to hold off until the trustees made it, uh, a decision on it. Uh, the last I heard, the wording was changed to uh, read impervia. In other words, either brick or concrete where the water would run off. Now, the reason I have stone down there is because the neighbor's yard over the years has flooded numerous times on both sides. Her yard is about six inches below the grade of the alley. The neighbor uh, to the east of her is at least a foot below. Uh, so alleviate more water in their yards, I went with a stone pad. Um, the, a few years back, President Puglia was uh, trying to re have the stone alleys repaved, or gravel alleys, repaved with pervious brick. In other words, something that the water could run through to prevent flooding of the yards. Well, due to the state uh, financial, uh, that was never put through. Uh, now, like I said, I'm being cited because the trailer is sitting on four inches of gravel. And it, according to the code now, it has to be impervious. In other words, more water to run off into my neighbor's yard. I have some pictures here of the pad that my trailer sits on it's at 715 Bristol, my daughter's house. It shows the pad that it sits on. It shows the neighbor's yard a couple years back when we had heavy rains being underwater. Now, I, I'm trying to get a, uh, I don't know if I'm grandfathered in with the old uh, code or not, but um, to me, like I explained the first code, with paved, if they're telling me brick or concrete, and a couple, I, I put brick or concrete, a couple years down, somebody says, oh no, we don't like that, how about going with blacktop? So it, it just, it was a little bit ambiguous 
the wording of it, and I try to get it straightened out, and um, basically it's an impervious, which, like I said, doesn't do my neighbor or my daughter's yard any good. Like I said, I have pictures of the alley and the yard, uh, my neighbor's yard and a neighbor's yard across the way. Uh, Frank, here's the thing that we'd like to do. If you can get those pictures copied, you know, give them to us so we can share them with everybody on the board and they can all look at it. Okay. That's one. Two, we've been paving alleys. So your alley, I know what your alley's like. Your alley's like a mountain compared to where you guys are. So, I mean, I'd like to, to kind of look at this because I know back in the day of when John was here and we did some street projects and we were getting money for the alleys and we did stub out some alleys. Just got to go back to the maps and find out which alleys have stubs in for sewers. If that's one of your alleys, and I would suggest that we get to Robert and everybody and see if that could be done, and maybe we paved that alley, put a sewer in there, and that'll help it out a little bit more. Um, as far as the pad for you right now, I, I'm not sure because it was prior to me being here that this all got to be done. So maybe we can just uh, take a look at it and have the board look at it and decide which way we'd like to go. I think that alley has been more stone in the 20 years I've been around here that you could never believe. And uh, I think we should do something about that first, and that would worry about the other part second. Um, there's alleys that are paved, and then there's rocks where the, or gravel where the cars park for the apartment buildings that are right there. So I mean, I think we need a little further talk on this, and I'd like to give the board a little time to think that over a little bit more. You bring us those pictures, I'll let them look at that. When you make copies of them, you can run them up to the front office and give them to the front office and tell them that this should go to the board. All right, and I also told you to make up an appointment with us so we can talk more, and I'd love to do that, okay? okay. And uh, at least give us a little opportunity, but go ahead, Stan. Uh, can you state your name for the record, please? Frank, Frank Bender. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else would like to approach? Well, it should be on. See if the light's on, the green light. Yeah, you're good. Um, I'm here today to disclose and uh, briefly describe my uh, business model. Uh, and hopefully uh, answer any questions you have and uh, leave here with your guys' blessing. Um, the proposed property that we're looking at is 1900 South Mannheim.
first six months of our business, any restaurant business, uh, we lose. It helps. We make anywhere between seven to $8,000 a month on the video gaming side, whereas all of our stores, which can be proven, uh, we do between twenty-four dollars and $28,000 a month gross. It's not a significant amount, but the reason why we have Stock, including Woodstock, uh, with the moratorium over it, over liquor license process. Uh, I have references in all cities and villages throughout, uh, mayors, uh, every village board, every city board that I've gone to and I've spoken at, they've given me pushback because of all these little gaming cabins. 1,100 square feet, 1,000 square feet, they come in, they say they're going to be a bistro, they're going to make steak sandwiches in front of you, and then they come and they put their five games. Uh, so what we've done and what, how we've been successful and what we've achieved is we've done what we said we were going to do. We've held our liquor license condition to our build-out, our business model, and we voluntarily have requested to have a restaurant liquor license, which specifically in Woodstock, Questions, board. No one. You, you know, <clears throat> how many? Um, I went on the website before, and I have trouble with it on my iPad, but on a regular computer, I was able to. Um, and I think it was uh, <clears throat> Spring Grove location, or, or maybe Huntley. But uh, how many tables? See, twenty-two, twenty-two hundred square feet. How many tables is that getting you? Uh, <clears throat> Okay. I would I would predict that we would see anywhere between forty five and fifty. Okay. How much of the space is going to be um, designated for preparation, like a kitchen area, stuff like that? Uh, everything is food prep on site. One of our contingencies for the liquor license in Spring Grove was they want food. I think it's eighty percent food prep on site, and that's how. The say uh, everything it's like a it's like a jersey mics on steroids you know it, I would say that uh, our bar is significant we can sit about 18 seats stool at the bar I mean everything's made there in front of you we have a storage room roughly about I would say uh, 500 square feet um, and then we have a line in the back uh, including a six foot deli case uh, a sit uh, Four and a half foot sandwich prep table. Uh, everything's cut, prepared right there um, on site. Um, cut, made fresh every day, every morning. That's the morning shift. Um, How many on a shift? Uh, at least two. Uh, three on the weekends for lunch, uh, and then for dinner and obviously events. Um, like this last Friday, I had a I had a five hundred fifty dollar lunch with two people, so they're kind of swamped. 
Go ahead, um, and would you be looking for restaurant hours or bar hours? Uh, we, what we do typically is we're open up from 8 a.m. till uh, till 1 a.m. That's our typical average uh, hours of operation. Um, we do we do standardize our menu. Um, I would like to say that we have offer breakfast at all of our locations. We've tried it at all of our yeah, locations. I didn't see it on the menu. That's yeah, right. we, Are you using a flat top grill? Is that what you're using? No, it's a commercial panini press. So uh, just a panini press? Yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a large two-phase product. Yeah. Questions? Any more? Something we're interested no, in. No frieds, right? No fried food? We actually use non-food from our staff perspective. We have 150 feet from another living vineyard. If the state of Illinois doesn't award these vineyards, we don't pay them as much as other people. Well, and I've been asked this in every city. I wouldn't, um, if I wasn't able to serve uh, wine or beer, I wouldn't open, open up for business just as well as uh, the, the gaming component. It's part of the concept. It's part of how it affects me. Um, yes, it, it is um, a frowned upon uh, component, but it's also, if you, if you do it aesthetically appease, appeasing, I think you can be successful with it and it won't affect uh, the front side. Any we're other parking at, we're, we're parking for the employees at the <coughs> of the building, I know that. Right, but is there enough parking in the front for everybody? Huh? Right. Right now there's there's uh, I believe five vacant units. So right now I'd probably say yeah. <laughs> but um, the two units that we're looking at are right next to the, the donut uh, oh, let's my shirt. Mm -hmm. So you're right close to the end. Interested board members. This is this is different than we've heard in the past. That's for sure. So right, I totally different concept that we've been getting coming right. in through here yeah. and everything else. You know, and, and uh, we've sent you little things about going online, looking. Their Yelp reviews were good and everything else. Uh, I mean, it's a little, it's an upscale place that you know. I kind of like the concept. I think it's a very nice little concept. It's something different we don't have in town. Uh, Mariano's has a wine bar and they do pretty well with that too. They, you know, they <coughs> go in and have wine and stuff like that. You can't compare this to like a Mariano's though. Well, not kind of similar, but it's just you're using the same concept. It's wine and we, stuff we, like it, that and beers. It's a retail side of Mariano's, let's say. I mean, we do sell meat cheap by the pound. Um, but I just want you guys to feel comfortable. Like, if you guys want to, if we can impose some kind of restriction for food, if, we, if you guys want to check like what Woodstock does. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just a little, <clears throat> still a little shy about, you know, we, we've opened up, I think, five of them now, and everybody came and pitched the same thing to us, and we've had, you know, the Stellas and all them, and the corporate, you know, these are these are corporations who come and put all this money into it and show us all these fancy, you know, pictures, and, and then they come in here, and nobody's doing food sales. They're doing all, all gambling, you know, so. If you put the 60% on it and we don't meet it, revoke the license. All I have 
to say is that you guys are pro business, truly pro business. And if you do question the operation and the model, go take a look at one of their stores. You're gonna take one step in, you're gonna take one step out. And, it's, and if you tell me it's not gonna be an asset to the community, I mean, it, it, it's ludicrous. It, it, you guys will, will, will absolutely love to have something like this in the community. It, it's, a, it's a night out with your girlfriend, it's a night out with a buddy. If you're not gonna go in, you're not gonna take shots. We're not a nightclub, I had a nightclub, not an interested in doing that, doing that again. This is more of a lounge, uh, wine bar, come get a New York style sandwich. We're busy two times the, during the day, lunch, dinner, then we just leave. You, you have TVs around? We have uh, four, four 60 inch TVs at all. Yeah, there we are. Okay. I'm interested. Nick? Yeah, no, when I went on the website, I felt a little bit better, and that's kind of why I wanted to get an idea of the square footage for the comparison, um, because I did like the fact that it looked like a restaurant as opposed to some of these uh, um, places that we've been um, uh, approached by recently. So I, I do like that concept, and you have a fairly large menu uh, as well. So, and uh, I do appreciate your honesty and kind of like a challenge, you know, like, that you'll hold your word, so I, I do appreciate that. I'm not opposed. No spirits, just beer and wine? No, full liquor license. Oh. Actually, we started out <coughs> with beer and wine, and then we went around and, and actually, you know, we have, and I, I'll show you guys. I'll, I'll give you guys some more literature. I'll give you my, my full liquor menu. I mean, I have Moscow Mules. I, I have fine brandy. I mean, we're not taking shots, like I said, but All we right. do offer it. It's an elderly crowd. It's, it's family friendly, uh, but it's, it's also a little bit fine, too, so. Sherby, you okay? I, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I appreciate you coming in and explaining your model. I do feel a little more comfortable with it, but I've been one of the staunch uh, uh, opposers of these video uh, gaming uh, facilities uh, in the community because I, I don't want Westchester to become known as the place to go for video gaming, so, and I don't want to see them you know, on every other block. I, I do have a, a concern with there being what, the, the, the two right there, um, 150 feet apart. Tommy. I, I hold a concern too, just like Sherby and Angela does, but I mean, I'd like to go see one of their spots before I'd make a time final decision. And I mean, I'm open to the idea, but again, I, I, I just really want to uh, make sure that we're we're getting what we uh, what we're being told, you know. Yeah. It's it's you know <coughs> just a, one quick question too. When you walk into your um, into one of your uh, your locations, where are the video um, poker machines or They're video all machines? Tucked away in the okay. back, front side is completely separate. Yeah. We have about forty thousand dollars in both custom carpentry built on site in all of our locations. And the first thing you guys will notice, I have if you visit the website, I have all ten bowls of yeah. for ten bucks a tile. Carl? I have no questions at this time. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, guys, if we, uh, from what I'm hearing, if we decide that this is what we want to do, uh, Mike said we need to create another license if we're looking forward to go forward on this. Um, I would hopefully that you guys give me a direction on what to do. We'd be happy to do that. Uh, and I know uh, in speaking with Mike, like I said, we'll have to create a different license because of the 60% food cost. And if the state doesn't grant you that, then you're down the tubes with that too. So that's um, that way. So if I'm hearing correctly, you know, looks like pretty much maybe, so maybe it <coughs> would go, because one, two, maybe three, maybe four. But uh, I would give them a little time to get back to me, and that'd be great. Okay, I don't want to make a decision tonight. They just got it with you. And remember I said, come on over, let them you know, it all soak in. You've done your job. I'm glad the honesty that you came forward. I've always looked at it and I liked it from the day one. So hopefully we can uh, make that happen for you. We'll get back to you and let you know. Thank you, Thank you very much can, for your can time. Can I ask you a question though? Yeah. Uh, you said earlier that uh, <coughs> in response to um, the communities up north with their 60% food and beverage percentage of sales, that you exceed that, you're at 70, 75%? Correct. I mean, there's no magic in the number 60%, so if you want to have a higher standard, you can do that. So you got to let me know if you're going to 
you have to create a new category of license and not <coughs> just adding one more license uh, to what we already have. You'd have to create that category. So if you want to pursue that, we'll have to draft that then. I mean, that's something I wouldn't be opposed to. Yeah. Right. To be honest with you. I mean, this way anybody I think moves forward. would probably feel more comfortable yeah. Yeah. With, with that. Yeah, 100 percent. Like I said, if, if we that's the category the we want. And then, you know. That'd be fine. I prefer not, not applying for this as a, just a regular license. I, I want you guys to feel comfortable. I don't want you guys to make a decision without actually one of you guys coming out and seeing the location. Because I'm very aesthetically done. I'm very proud of my work. I take pride in what I do. Okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. All right. Okay, so they'll get back to me. I'll Thank get you. to you. Thank you. Thank Excuse you. me, sir. Oh. Would you fill out one of these sheets at the, at the on the back table for our record and then put the website of your business on it so we can all look at it? Thank you. Thank you. Come on up, Gene. Gene Platter. Um, I'm just curious, how many liquor licenses does Westchester have? Do we have a fixed number, or do we just award them on the basis of our judgment? The we board create them as they are needed. We only have active licenses. We don't have things sitting around waiting for someone to just come in and pluck one up. Okay. I, as far as the actual number, um, I think it's like 21 or 22. I okay. No, I just wondered if yeah. we had a fixed number. So when no. you can only get a liquor license when somebody gives one up. Yeah, and the, and the twenty, I believe it's twenty one or twenty two. Twenty two. But that's also like Jewel, Mariano. gas station, it's any everybody. of those that, that sell um, packaged, not just pour, you know, pour and package. It's a combination of all. Of them. There's different degrees of licenses. Okay. Right. And also, Gene, what we do is <coughs> if someone closes a store and their liquor license comes back to us, the number is decreased by one until the board votes to increase it by one. So it's not just there's a license pending here. We have to, the board has to agree to allow another license in. So it, uh, it, it's a better checks and balance of uh, anybody walking in the door and how we can control what comes in. Okay. Okay? Thanks. Yep. You're welcome. Anybody else? <coughs> no one else? All right. That being said, let's move down to item number six, consent agenda. Uh, a is the approval of the record of bills ending 926 2017 in the amount not to exceed $724,187.89. B is the uh, minutes from the September 12th meeting of uh, the board and the committee of the whole. Uh, anything, anyone want anything pulled? If not, we'll need a motion and second. So moved. Second. Motion made by Trustee Steckard, seconded by Trustee Perry. Any discussion on this? If not, may we have a roll. Trustee Kilcogno. Aye. Trustee Celestino. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Stecker. Aye. Trustee Yurkovich. Aye. President Gattuso. Aye. That motion carries. Moving down into the active agenda on number seven here. Uh, item eight, a resolution authorizing the village of Westchester to withdraw from the intergovernmental Risk Management Agency for the coverage of year beginning January 1st, 2019. This was on the Committee of the Whole. We discussed this uh, last two weeks. It's up for a uh, approval tonight. So we'll need a motion. So moved. Second. Motion made by Trustee Yurkovich, seconded by Trustee Stecker. Mr. President, if I can, um, if you recall at the last meeting, we adopted an ordinance that essentially ratified a letter that was dated August 30th, sent to Irma, uh, seeking to withdraw uh, from Irma, effective January 1 of 2018. Um, we discussed the fact that uh, Irma would re had in their bylaws a requirement that uh, we had to have a resolution accompany that letter. We had to provide that notice within 120 days prior to the termination date. And if uh, we did not provide a at least a nine month notice we would forfeit a return of our reserve fund if you recall I indicated that we weren't certain whether Irma would recognize the ratification within the 120 days uh, to accept that resolution it turned out that they did but Irma was taking the position that since we were within 
the nine months we would forfeit our reserve funds. They offered us an opportunity to go to a meeting and plead our case. When I spoke with the executive director um, of IRMA, I questioned as to whether anyone had ever been successful in getting a return of that uh, reserve fund within the nine months, and she stated no. Um, I didn't expect that we would have any success being uh, the inaugural one. And um, she was gracious enough to uh, acquiesce in my questioning as to whether we could rescind our withdrawal on January 1st of 18, because surprisingly, they said, oh yeah, you can get out, but we're gonna keep your money. So um, she said yes, that if we adopted a resolution um, rescinding our prior one and um, seeking to change that date to January 1 of 2019, that's the start of their new fiscal year, we would qualify for the refund of our reserve uh, fund, which gets paid out over a five-year period of time, I might add. But uh, she was gracious enough to indicate that if we did that tonight, that that would um, uh, go through and uh, wouldn't even require a vote of either their executive board or the board of directors. So it's my strong recommendation that you approve this uh, resolution tonight. It rescinds the one from the prior meeting and then authorizes um, Chief Stelter to send a new letter that I've already crafted that needs to be sent to um, Irma tomorrow. Everybody agree? Okay, we had a motion second, now we need a roll. Trustee Kilcogno. Aye. Trustee Stolostino. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Stecker. Aye. Trustee Yurkovich. Aye. President Catuso. Aye, that motion carries. Under item B, a resolution accepting the bids and awarding the contract to J.A. J. A. Johnson Paving Company for services related to the 2017 Motor Fuel Tax Street Paving Program in the amount of uh, $684,656. We need a motion and a second. This is for the, the Crestwood area, if I'm not mistaken, in those streets, Robert? Correct. Okay. So moved. Second. Motion made by Trustee Calcagno, seconded by Trustee Celestino. And once again, we discussed this at the Committee of the Whole meeting last time. Uh, it wasn't on the agenda, but we brought it up because we had the bid results. Okay. Just one question. Yes. Have we taken any, did we get any references? Um, <clears throat> projects that they've done you know the size and right they uh, their last project in town was um, Eisenhower Lane and we they had, yeah. yeah they they did that uh, by the town right? we have so, okay. that was in enterprise 20, you mean enterprise yes Johnson. too many years in Lombard I'm sorry okay. it was in Eisenhower Lane uh, <laughs> yeah uh, that was pretty successful to have uh, nice crews to do that this type of work and they're anxious to yeah. start as soon as possible and Just knock the job we haven't had any issues with their their work over there um, we had some performance issues but they came out and remediated it uh, as soon as he brought it up they had some shoving over the overlayment and uh, when he brought that to their attention they were very responsive they came back they cut that area out and they repaved it at no additional cost to us within 10 days after we notified them. So I thought they were very responsive. Um, I know that back then they had the company up for sale. Um, apparently they didn't sell it. So um, they certainly can, can check their uh, financial wherewithal. Uh, they have to file with IDOT to be pre-qualified to bid on this job, which requires them to submit a financial statement with equipment, manpower. I was just curious if we checked any other, you know, communities that they've done work in. and We, we had Burke call and uh, that was the part of what they do for us yeah. is they check references and, and they did check out they didn't have any complaints from the last three projects they've done for municipalities I, I don't have the names of those towns but we can ask no that's right as long as, as long as the uh, engineers have done any Angela we, I think they've done I remember them being bid bid awarded uh, years yeah I know we, we we've had a couple of projects over the last four or five years and a couple of them you know well, one was Central. I think Central, we had a problem with them. They yeah. Did not, you know, 
As right, long, I as, remember as, long as the engineers are doing, you know, doing their due diligence and uh, by putting more motor fuel tax into this, we're required to make sure they're pre-qualified, that they've gone through a state vetting process to be able to bid on the work, and it's uh, put on the state uh, award agenda. So there's a, a lot more process that we go through when we use motor fuel tax to pay for it, and part of that is to make sure that uh, that company is in good standing with the state and has the economic wherewithal <coughs> to do the job. Good, everybody's good? All right, Stan, can we call a roll? Trustee Calcagno. Aye. Trustee Solestino. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Stecker. Aye. Trustee Yurkovich. Aye. President Catuso. Aye. Motion carries. Under item C, an ordinance amending a portion of section of 14.52.020 entitlement village inspections for real estate certificate of compliance required and of Chapter 1452 Entitlement Certificates of Compliance and of Title 14 entitled Building and Construction of the Village of Westchester Municipal Codes. We discussed this in the last uh, committee of the whole and uh, everyone seemed to be comfortable with that, with the way we were putting our inspection sheets together for our homes. So if anything- and This is just for residential, yeah. Mayor. Um, the commercial, I don't know if we have to amend those, but if we do, we'll have to come back. It's a separate section of the uh, code. Uh, it can be amended very simply, but um, this is only dealing with the residential uh, compliance checklist. Everybody okay with this? Go ahead. <coughs> the only thing, um, I was going to ask if we could actually put the citation, if it's, you know, section 502.1 of the property management code, if we could cite each individual one just so people would know. The ordinance has them. Ordinance, okay. The ordinance does in front of you, has, has all of those code sections. Okay, and that, or let's see. And if we could just, or if we could at least put what our most current codes are that, that we have adopted just on there so people would know. If someone were to grab this online, they would at least know what we're operating under. I believe it's in the first paragraph. Um, I didn't see a. On page 24, it recites the 2012 property maintenance code. I'm saying on the check on the checklist itself. He wants on the oh, residential yeah. compliance. Yeah, well that, that's actually not part of the ordinance, the form itself. But the code section just identifies what the inspectors are looking for. So yeah, no, I, that's what you I was can add anything the, you want to that form on over the form time. itself is what yeah. I was getting at. Is that's why I was so, kind of hoping. So the, the the I know the the form prior to this one now that we're attempting to adopt here is referenced. Um, National codes, is that what you're saying? Put those back on? Because I know there was one still on there. Well, what, they all have a reference. In, in, the, um, in the packet it says, you know, section, some of our property uh, maintenance codes, some of the NEC, the National Electric Code. I was just saying that if we cited on the check sheet where exactly it came from, that, you know, because sometimes people are looking in, they're looking in, in and one and it's Whose in the code other. are we following? Yeah, the national code. Yeah, yeah. just so people would know what State exactly. Codes. Yeah, yeah. I, I get you. So and in. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I think okay. that's the best thing we can do. It. Right. Okay, but yeah, as long as people would know what what we're operating under. Okay. So we're we're following national codes. Is that what we're saying? We're gonna yeah. And the only question I had was uh, it said about like with the BX and. Believe me, I'm no code guru, but it just said that uh, BX is okay if it's if it and if it looks good, book, yeah. really. Because I've always thought that you couldn't go more than a four foot whip or something like that, and that's kind of why they sell the four foot whips. That's why they were really, yeah, that's always kind of curious. I didn't look it up. I just wanted to ask because I would never. Yeah, I think that bold language on the form, the, the inspection form, came out of the code. Sure. Yeah, the, the issue with that is when they look at it. When you use that BX, I believe that you know it's got to be, you know, you got to make sure the other end of it's grounded, because BX is not technically a, Two wire. a solid ground, so it should be grounded at that end. So if you're not opening things up, that's where it gets kind of 
complicated and you don't really don't, you know. Yeah, it's just kind of the way it was for me, if it's maintained in a neat and orderly. Yeah, manner, there's those little I said, no. little things that can, you know, trip people up and. Comfortable with this? I don't know if we had a motion in a second. Did we? And I think you have one, Max or Greenfield. Stand down. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get a motion and second on it. So moved. Motion made by Trustee Miller. Seconded by? Second. By Trustee Yerkovich. Any other discussion? You can vote by acclamation or if you desire a roll call. All in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed? I'm hearing none. That passes. Under eight, a manager's report. Club Arms reports the first one is the village auditor's tickets are now uh, here at the village. They started on Monday, they'll be here tomorrow, so you'll, I'm sure they'll collect a couple stuff for you to go over to the village president to ask for fraud questions. So we'll work, uh, Teresa will work on the uh, current auditor, we'll take their current account. Uh, she's going to get the audit done. Um, we'll remind her a few items with the school board, slash park, library, village board meeting. Chief. I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt. I'm sitting here thinking, yeah, that didn't, we didn't spend any money on that, but it's an ordinance. We need to take a roll on that, so, on the code. On the, on code. Back to the well, motion you, second you on call that the roll one. Call, even call the roll call. <coughs> Trustee, <Miller, coughs> Trustee Miller's motion, Trustee Yerkovich seconded. Call the roll. Yeah. <coughs> Trustee Calcogno. Aye. Trustee Celestino. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Stecker. Aye. Trustee Yerkovich. Aye. President Gattuso. Aye. Thank you. Aye, right, Steve. You're up. <coughs> oh, we're going to give you the Heimlich. J yeah. Jimmy, give him the Heimlich. <laughs> Stay away from me. <laughs> um, uh, just a couple of uh, kudos to the boys. Uh, good work by patrol detectives to respond to that home invasion the other night on Sunday. And, uh, Actually made the capture the next day and charged the person today, so you know, that was a good job by everybody. Uh, I went to chamber lunch today over at Alpine, and that went real well. Talked with a lot of business owners and uh, dropped off some of the flyers there for people to uh, put up for the flu shots next week that the village will be uh, conducting as well. And uh, lastly, I myself personally returned on Sunday from Nashville. I was at the Special Olympics conference last week. Uh, went real well. Um, Illinois turned out. Illinois uh, Law Enforcement Torch Run came out number two in the world uh, as far as money donated last year, $3.3 million. So uh, I was real proud for Illinois to, to be there and uh, for me being a director to actually accept that award. That was real nice. So, and that's my report. Jimmy. Uh, actually, I have nothing really to report tonight. Um, and, uh, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> Greg. Excuse me, uh, Chief, what about the Cubs trophy? Uh, you're going to see that in the <laughs> weekly report. What so team is that? <laughs> Best Jay, team. Knows. easy on that one. <laughs> Greg, the World Series winners. Yeah, as reported in, uh, in, in the report as well, uh, the Leafback program, we're going to officially start that on October 3rd, allowing everybody an opportunity, fair opportunity, to receive that information in the newsletter. The uh, leaf bags will be up here in the front. I've uh, gotten public works to bring them all back here from the uh, overhead tower, so I'm going to have them assist me, get them up front. Uh, the other thing I had mentioned before uh, regarding the Secretary of State list to try and match up with vehicle stickers, I've uh, submitted all that paperwork to the Secretary of State, got a confirmation that they received it, but haven't received word as to how long this is going to take. So it is work in progress. As soon as we get that information, I'll give it to Third Millennium to, to begin working on it. 
um, and we should get, uh, I'll be working with uh, Jay to get an appropriate letter uh, to send to, to the residents uh, regarding that matter. That's all I have. So uh, Greg, for yes. the leaf bags, will we be sending a notice out to residents or putting something in the newspaper? That yeah, there is a, a newsletter, uh, it's I'll call it an article, little yeah. area, Herb. ad size area that's going to explain to the residents uh, they can come in and pick up a five pack if necessary. They would like more. Obviously, they'll be. Uh, we, we're not, we're we had sort of gotten spoiled having them delivered. Yes, uh, we just had some difficulties coming up with uh, the amount Empower of volunteers to, to get it out it. there and everything else, and then you know getting it to their house. We've also had a problem with theft. Uh, yeah, people were coming were behind us picking them up. So I mean, that was even worse. So it's like, okay, we're giving them to you. They're taking. And they're there have stealing. been people coming in. Uh, I was just notified that from Jay here that. Some people today even uh, came to pick up some. So it's people who use them, people who need them, can, can definitely come pick them up, and uh, we have them here. Thank you. That's all I have. Robert. Uh, two items. Um, I copied the board on uh, the notices that we're sending out in regards to the lead and copper testing we've done. Uh, we picked 30 random sites uh, working with the IEPA uh, to test lead and copper. So all those notices are going out. Um, every single site passed. So we had a, a, a few residual tests, but I think uh, with the information, you're able to look at all of those. There was one typo, the one on Oak Avenue. And it's at Suffolk Avenue. Uh, we don't have an Oak Avenue. So um, <coughs> other than that minor correction. Uh, so we continue to be lead-free in our water supply. Nice. Uh, where we're getting some tests for lead and copper residuals, Mostly that's in-house plumbing, that they used old lead solder. So there's still some of that, but uh, we're getting trace amounts significantly below the action level. So all's good on the uh, lead in the waterfront. Uh, second item I have is that we've been asked by one of our engineering companies that uh, did the design work and helped us with construction inspection on the Mayfair Reservoir. Uh, they would like to put that project up for consideration for a national award. Um, we've been in conversation with the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, and uh, they are a proponent for doing this as well. So uh, our conditions were that uh, we, we would be a co-sponsor with MWRD to see if we could be uh, win this national award for water resources uh, under the condition that the engineering company spend all the money to that's a $600 uh, fee that you have to pay to get considered for the award. And they agreed to do that. The most likely, if we win, they would have their name all over that, and that would be a piece of advertising for them. But I just want to make the board aware that uh, uh, it received uh, local, uh, with the uh, uh, Illinois chapter of the American Con Council of Engineering Companies, professional engineering companies, uh, it received vetting as one of their better projects. So as it goes forward, um, the Illinois engineering community recognizes this as a significant project in Northeast Illinois. So uh, just wanted to pass it on, make you aware that uh, we could potentially win an award with this. Did they? Thank you. Yeah, I did a lot of digging on that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Mike. Nice. Carl, you had something. That was going to be my question. Is it still a chance for possibly getting a work for project from the APWA? Um, yes. Yeah. Good. That's it, Robert? That's it. All right. Melissa. Uh, just wanted to let the board know that Burger King came in and applied for their interior remodel today and also to do site work. So you'll probably start seeing them making some parking lot improvements and things like that in the next couple of days. Thank you. Michael, you have anything? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you. Board members, please. I, I have nothing to report for UDC Nikki? this year. Nothing tonight. Sir? Tommy? Cab's doing their annual Halloween walk October 28th at the Commons over there by Mariano's from 2 to 4. Thank you. For the kids. And? Nothing to see. Carl? Yeah, just uh, uh, save the date on Saturday, the second Saturday of November, November 11th. The village will be hosting a document shredding event for village residents. 
Uh, more, more information and details will be coming up in the November newsletter. And we'll have it also posted on the website and other information um, facilities as well. So, but uh, we're, it will be on the Saturday, November 11th. Okay. Is this the last yeah. we've been for the year? Yeah, we do. One has been done in the spring, and then we do one in the fall. Okay. Under mine, I'd like to congratulate Gary Cassanders on his retirement coming up uh, from the park after 40 wonderful years. Gary's been a, a really it's like uh, 43. 43. So well, I missed three years somewhere. Huh? Or 46. I think I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's he's 40 plus years he's been at the park and uh, just like to uh, acknowledge that the dedication that he's did to the park and what's going on in there throughout the years has been wonderful and he's been a pleasure to work with and uh, with the village also together so my uh, wonderful wishes to Gary in his retirement and uh, hopefully him and his wife will get along while he's home you know so that'll be nice okay <coughs> Other than that, we do not have an executive session tonight. No, sir. If not, a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. Motion made by Trustee Yerkovich, seconded by Trustee Calcagno. Okay. Roll. No, by acclamation. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, let's move into the Committee of the Whole.